Hey y'all! Woo! That is a whole family pack of Lifton tea. Lifton? I'm seeing sounds right now. <laughs> Dag it on! We're getting into a lot of stuff today. So I'm gonna show you guys my official mobile home Christmas tour. I'm throwing it in this video because I don't want to do a whole video dedicated to the mobile home Christmas tour because if you've been here, you've seen it kind of transform into the Christmas wonderland it is right now. And so it would kind of be just a replica of content. And I don't ever like doing that. I'm really just taking you guys around to show you the things and answer the questions. People have been asking about where I got something or how much something was. Showing off a lot of the things from you guys this season. That's what we're going to focus on. But I am going to show you all of my Christmas decor. So if you're new here, you're about to get that. Sorry. Um, thawing out my kids. Peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. So if you hear crinkling, that's, that's what it is. We're going to be doing the home tour. We're going to be doing some homemaking stuff. I'm going to try my hand at homemade bread. I'm trying to be frugal in 2023. I want to be as frugal as possible. So I'm trying my best to cut down costs. I'm trying to cut down all kinds of spending. So I'm going to try my hand at making homemade bread. It's probably going to end up turning into saltine crackers. I have a habit of making really cool things out of mistakes. So it's probably going to be a saltine cracker. I'm also going to show you guys how I have my homeschool stuff organized. I did a video for Jim Morrell. The Jim Morrell <laughs> asked me to do a video for her membership website. And I about pooped a brick because that's wild. I've watched Jim Morrell for like six years. When I was at a crossroads in my life, I've watched Jim Morrell's videos. That's how long it's been that I've been watching her. So God works in mysterious ways, I'm telling you. But in that video, I shared a little bit about like how I organize our homeschool and stuff, especially living in such a small area with so many people. When living in a single wide with a whole lot of people, there's six of us in here, storage and space, it's, it's crucial. It's crucial in here. So it's not the fanciest and a lot of the ways that I do organize those things, they aren't ideal, but they are functional for my family and it's worked for a very, very, very long time. You can probably hear my dishwasher over here and my washer. Who is this? I have them both going at the same time. <laughs> I have had a lot of questions to do homeschool related content. I just don't, I feel like there's already a lot of information out there and so I can't really all I can really tell you is what I do and how we do it here and it works for us but there are several ways to homeschool there are several methods to it and none of them are right they're all just whatever works for that family ours happens to work for us and it's worked for us for as long as my kids have been school age it's worked for us though because I've kept it simple and I haven't tried to get all fancy with it the fancier I get the more overwhelmed I get and then I just fail <laughs> this uh, family pack of Lipton tea is kicking in. I'm ready to do something. I'm ready to get the daggone thing done. Son, that's that's how big the tea bag is. <laughs> so my homeschooling area is moved back in here. I told you guys I was getting rid of this as a snack cart, and I told you guys I was probably changing it over to our homeschooling stuff again because we're not doing a bunch of expensive, bulky snacks, fudge rounds, all those things anymore. We'll get those in increments and occasionally as far as spending so much money on that stuff i'm done with it i'd rather do stuff from scratch anyway less preservatives and all that good stuff so i moved this out of my kitchen stopped using it as the pantry snack stock up area and i brought it back in here and used it what it was originally intended for which is homeschool stuff this also helps me keep my homeschool stuff together because when this was in the kitchen then all my homeschool stuff was in two bins underneath my dresser and it just wasn't accessible and it wasn't ideal i like it better this way on top right here you'll see i have what I call a morning basket and then above here one of my kids insisted I hang their artwork up on my wall in my bedroom so I got some really pretty artwork with me and uh, I think they yeah they drew me filming and all sorts of things so Jolie made me that and I had to hang it up up there more my morning basket is what we do as a unit together in the mornings first thing whenever we first start school we can do this either at the table or in the living room in the kitchen shoot i don't care on pretty days on the porch i'm very relaxed when it comes to homeschooling but very serious about the curriculum the work gets done no matter what homeschooling is my priority monday through friday that's all that i care to get done everything else is a bonus but this is the most important part to my week this isn't going to go into depth as to like the curriculum we use or anything but just to lay it out there we do use the ace pace curriculum and then we supplement with stuff like story of the world in places that i feel like the ace curriculum kind of lets us down a little bit these right here are my kids binders these have their calendars which is how we keep up with what day it is because we're hermit and we need some like this to keep up with what day it is 
in here we have that week's test so these are all the tests that we pull out of their pace books these things right here and I three hole puncher punched them thingy what I don't know what I just said I three I used a three hole puncher on them. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say I used three hole puncher on them and I put him here and I put him I put him here in the front you all see why I don't do Hong Kong videos <laughs> I put them here in front of this folder this folder is what keeps all the recent months test completed tests this is how i keep up with those every few months i'll take these out usually once every quarter i'll take these out and i'll move them to our permanent records area and it's where i keep all my kids records as in regards to attendance grades all that good stuff but this is their finish and score test for this quarter so there's quite a few in there because it's december <clears throat> And then here, those are paces that they're actively working on this week. I keep their binder really simple, but it has everything in here that they need to get what they need done. ACE is a very independent curriculum. It teaches the kids to independently work and independently score all their stuff at a really early age. It literally starts teaching them in first grade how to score their own tests, how to score their own, all that good stuff. How to check and how to correct all of their work. That's also how I get as much as I get done outside of homeschooling. Homeschooling does take up a huge chunk of my day and it is my top priority but because ace has taught my kids to be so independent when it comes to their curriculum it's it makes it really easy for me to get stuff done outside of homeschooling in that window of time too my biggest comment is well you're so uneducated how do you educate your children i had the requirements that i need in order to teach my kids at home which in the state of tennessee is a high school diploma or an equivalent like ged or something like that that's what the state of tennessee requires you to have in order to homeschool your children one person in the house the person who is schooling has to have those credentials tennessee is pretty strict on their homeschooling stuff so you have to keep records you have to have that high school diploma or ged equivalent you have to school a certain amount of days we always end up schooling right at 200 but it's required that you homeschool I think it's over 185 days we go year-round so that's really easy for us and we take minimal breaks because we don't do a whole lot of stuff we don't travel a lot or anything like that and if we take too long of a break off then my kids won't retain what they learned for that semester so that's why we don't do big summer breaks I learned that I spent a big majority of that first quarter of the next year recapping all the stuff they learned in the last quarter of the last year because there was such a big time gap so that's why we go year round and we only take very small minimal breaks just so we could stay on track so these are accessible in the morning basket so they'll grab these first thing mark off what day it is check out what tests they need to do if they're needing to do a test that day check out what pages in their pace they need to do all those things cammy's homeschooling looks a lot different and if you guys want me to go into depth about what i do for him I can. His looks a lot different than this though. In here I also have my homeschooling planner which is what one of y'all graciously sent me. It has come in handy so much. I had a different one and it worked well but this one right here has everything I could possibly need in a homeschool planner. It has a year at a glance calendar and even though this is a 2023 one I just recently got it a couple of months ago. I've been using it because it doesn't really go into dates specific to 2023 on the pages i'll show you a blank page here in a minute so it's easy for me to start it this year and then just continue it for however long i have blank pages left but it has areas like a weekly layout and here's a blank one this is just a brief weekly layout as to what you're going to do monday through friday it has enough areas for all the subjects and all the extracurricular stuff so it comes in handy this is how i've been keeping up with what we need to do for that week and planning ahead of time what we need to do for the next week i have several 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 pages of this left so i'll probably be able to use this throughout half of the 2023 school year then it has about a curriculum by subject area and here's a blank page for that so it has like grade range website how much money it is it really helps when it comes to keeping up with your curriculum and when you'll need new curriculum and what grade you're going to need all that good stuff right here we have an overview by grade section here's a clear page so it has curriculum lineup by subject it has the curriculum book topic and then it has kindergarten first grade second grade third grade all the way to 12th grade and then you put the subject specific to right here this page helps us keep up with where we're at in that subject future planning area has an area just to really brainstorm this is called a mass curriculum brainstorm name covered criteria pros and cons this is if you're struggling with a a with a subject or a curriculum like we were struggling with ACE's history their social studies so we still do their social studies but we started implementing the story of our world history because we felt like it was a lot deeper and my kids have really been enjoying that I'll show you that here in a minute because it's in the morning basket we do all that together that's it for the homeschooling planner my regular planner looks very very similar I want to do something else when it comes to my personal planner 
but I won't be doing that till the beginning of the year because I'm just deep into the way that I do my planning for this year right now and I've already have everything for the rest of the year planned out so I'm not going to change it right now but at the beginning of the year I'm definitely going to change the way that I do my planning in my actual personal planner. Story of the world is our history that we do as a unit together as a family first thing in the morning. We're on volume one ancient times. This is Colton's workbook so age appropriate workbooks are these right here it just is basically like a test after every lesson that we read out of here which is this is the book it's like a big old chapter book kind of when you read a lesson and if they're old enough age appropriate on that level then they'll go and do this workbook or if they're smaller kids then you would do like art um a short little semi essay on what they read if they can read and write but the older kids use a workbook along with that this is my welcoming mom a six-week journey to discover your god-given calling this is our devotional that we're doing again we love this thing we could do this over and over so we've been doing this for our devotional and then this is our chapter book that we're reading we do a read aloud and either i'll read it colton will read it or the girls will read it to us doing a read aloud helps us kind of prepare and do a slow gradual start to our school day and not just jumping right in it it also helps that we rotate who's reading it so it helps my vocabulary their vocabulary the more I read the better my vocabulary is you'll actually be able to tell in videos if I haven't read in a while because my vocabulary will start to what's the word see <laughs> will start to diminish is that the right word I've been on a diminished kick for the last few weeks I've been using that word left and right I don't even know if I'm using it right but that's our read aloud for this Christmas season Colton has his own independent books that he reads his own independent chapter books these are books that we read together this right here under here is a little weekly uh, flat planner like table planner and that's how I schedule out my videos and keep up with what I need to film and what I need to edit and what I need to upload what thumbnail I need to make all that stuff and then in here I have pencils pens a crap ton of erasers I will never have to buy an eraser for the rest of my life I got this I think off Amazon for a really good price I don't think they realized how many it was going to be but they're layered so there's a lot of them <laughs> Markers, all sorts of markers, expo markers, highlighters, permanent markers, Crayola markers, glue for days. Thank God none of us are glue eaters. Got some whiteboards and some construction paper. Extra stuff like scissors, extra little pencil erasers, tacks, pencil sharpeners have to go in here or they'll fly away like a fart in the wind. They'll go somewhere and hide hole puncher, clips, stuff like that. Extra workbooks for if I feel like we're falling in a subject, just to double it up, we'll do something like this. And then Cammy does his little work workbook. These are the ACE record keeping set. So this has stuff like their attendance, their grades, progress reports, all that stuff. This has all of that in there just waiting to be filled out after each quarter. This one's empty, hallelujah. I'm not crazy about filling up any bin anymore. Anytime I see an empty bin, I shout. And then in this, this, and this, it's just future paces that they've yet to get to. Oh, girls, your sandwiches are sold. <laughs> That's the video I did for Jim Rail, though. I just kind of broke it down and talked about that. And then I also went a little bit into our homeschooling budget. So we do the envelope system for our homeschooling, too. And since we don't go crazy with homeschooling organization, we don't do all the fancy, trendy stuff or aesthetic stuff and stuff like that, then we have more money to put in our homeschooling envelope that goes towards field trips fun field trips not just free field trips but fun field trips we live in an area in tennessee where we have so many things right outside our house next door we have a state park museums aquariums zoos most of those things cost money and and i'd rather put our homeschooling envelope towards that than put it towards all the fancy aesthetic trendy organization things that you see on pinterest it's beautiful it's gorgeous i love it but girlfriend wants to go to the zoo i'd rather see a gorilla i ain't got my life together in a lot of areas but i do have it together when it comes to homeschooling i told y'all many 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 times that's the only area in my life that i can keep an actual routine on and i think it's because i've done it for so long i established that routine a long long time ago that tells me i can establish new routines i just have to try really hard at it and i'm trying and i'm seeing progress i'd like to see progress quicker but progress is progress if i'm going to make any homemade bread i better do it now because it's getting up in the afternoon and i was wanting to make homemade bread for a recipe and this recipe doesn't require for you to like to let it rise overnight it's supposed to be a beginner's recipe I found it on youtube somebody shared their wisdom <laughs> and i was like yes i can't remember the name of who it is but it's one of the most viewed bread easy bread 
videos, I'll link it down below. Because if this is good, girlfriend deserves some recognition. <laughs> this is way out of my comfort zone. But one of my New Year's resolutions is to continue doing things out of my comfort zone if it betters myself. And don't ask me why, but a marina who makes homemade bread sounds like a better marina to me. It does right now anyway. Ask me in a few minutes if it doesn't work out and, and I'll let you know. I wanted to real quick update you guys because some of you guys asked me for an update on the raw dog food. Banks has gained, it's official, Banks has gained one pound from these suckers and that's just supplementary so he's eating what dog food he will eat that's like you know the arms but then he eats two of these a day and let me show you what my baby looks like now i don't know if you guys noticed but he had lost a ton of weight we don't know if it's due to the revolution his heartworm preventative um we, or if it's just an allergy or what but he had lost a lot of weight his coat wasn't looking good he was looking pretty daggone shaggy and it was worrying me to death i saw a recipe for satin balls on youtube and i thought well i mean as long as it's okay with the vet like it couldn't hurt to try and while it was expensive it was worth it Banksy baby let's show them how fat you booger are look at that he has gained so much weight and look how shiny his coat is he has gained so much weight i'm so proud of you and and y'all gotta see tater too because you know i don't leave tater out when i give them the satin balls her coat look look how you shine bright like a diamond tater you shine bright like a diamond look how shiny she is she is so shiny and she's also put on some weight too only a little bit he's really put on the weight though he has really put on the weight so if your dog is dealing with i'm not gonna say it's for all dogs now because you guys know I don't play when it comes to our babies, whether it, be, whether it be human babies or fur babies. I don't play when it comes to their health. But if your dog is struggling with gaining weight, not wanting to eat, having no appetite, their coat's looking really dull and pretty pitiful, you might want to bring it up to your vet at your next checkup. I'm glad I did. I'm glad I did. Let me show you how crazy they are about these, though. You see your ball? You see your ball? Here. Tell them how you feel about it. Oh, don't take it off, Tim and Eller. You dig in it, ain't you? Some of you guys are asking why the molasses is in there. Molasses in a big amount is not good for dogs. And it has to be black strap molasses, unsulfured molasses, in order for it to work in this recipe. But it does have some really good perks too. It helps with vitamin B and a lot of other things too. I literally got a degree in satin balls and dogs <laughs> before I gave these to them. Usually I have to feed them in their crate so that they don't drag it all over the floor like so. I'm going to start on the bread before I show you guys the Christmas tour because I want the bread to be rising while I show you guys the Christmas tour. I'll leave a specified list of ingredients and the measurements down below in the description box. I'll top it out and I'll also link the video. This smelled really weird. <laughs> and I'm using, I'm not using the right measuring things because they were in the dishwasher. But I have a fourth of a teaspoon, so I just have to do it four times for a teaspoon. <laughs> I'll tell you guys the measurements in the description box. But I use some yeast, some dry active yeast. I use some sugar and just a little bit of honey. And I whisk that up really good with some warm water. I don't bathe enough to know what the appropriate degree of water should be. They said warm enough that you can bathe in. Uh, to me, warm water can be a lot of things. So I just use the lowest degree of warm water that I could possibly get from my faucet. I'm using some salt in here. It was said to use kosher salt, but my salt, the regular Morton salt, worked just fine. And then I used an egg, cracked that sucker in there without no shells, baby. I'm a professional. And then I just started whisking it all together. After it's whisked all together, I added in my flour. I got my clean hands in there really good and just started mixing it with my fingers until it was really all coming together and being combined. Once it's combined, it'll be really sticky, so you'll wanna take it out of the bowl, 
put it on a surface. I had to use a cutting board because I have gaps here in my butcher block top countertop. So I used a cutting board to keep the flour, too much flour from getting down in the crevices because it's a pain in the rear end to get out. Because the dough was so sticky, I just lightly floured the surface here and started kneading it. So I just started folding it over, hammering it with my, my hand, like my the palm of my hand, just like really, really, basically a deep tissue massage is what I gave this daggone dough. <laughs> a deep tissue massage until it wasn't sticky no more and it wasn't leaving my hands really gross. Oh, I think I made my first bread, baby. <gasps> Why are we gonna name you? Oh, Clarence. It just came to me. It just came to me. I'm gonna name you Clarence. Kyle looks like a little dumpling, if I'm being honest. The expert that taught me how to do this said that putting it back in the flour mess bowl is just perfectly fine. So I made sure that I had my clean dishcloth over it, covering the bowl, and I turned my oven on to 350 left it on there for three minutes, and then I turned it off and put the bowl in the off oven, okay? You just leave it on 350 for three minutes and then turn it off, and you leave it in that off oven for an hour. Okay, so while that's rising in the oven, I had to be sure, I've checked five times to make sure that sucker's turned off. <laughs> while that's rising in the oven that is turned off, I'm going to give you guys the Christmas tour uh, I will say first and foremost, well, if you're not new here, then you wasn't expecting anything more than this, but I, it's not clean. It is as clean as it was when I got on camera, but I'm not gonna go through and exceptionally clean it to show you guys this because I like to keep it real and this is what my house would look like if you came over and was looking at my Christmas decor. If you are new here, my family and I are a family of six and we live in a trailer park in Tennessee and we are absolutely over the moon in love with our little 16 by 80 single wide. It ain't much to some, but it's a whole lot to me because I literally prayed for this home. I get asked a lot if I'll ever move or if I'll ever move to a bigger house or if we ever are financially stable if we could if we would move to a house 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 and my answer to that is always we will move if the good Lord wants us to move and if we don't I could die here in my bedroom in my little full-size bed a happy camper would we like to have land yes would we like to move this to land yes but I could die here in this little trailer park in my little bedroom in my little full-size bed a happy camper <laughs> and when I get asked if we would ever move out if we became financially stable we are financially stable now we used to be dirt poor and we're not thousand dares <laughs> by any means but you there I don't even know if there's a such thing as a thousand dare in this day and age with how everything is so expensive even the thousand dares are out there struggling some of them but we are financially stable we could move to a home home uh, we could go out here and get a mortgage for $450,000. But the ultimate goal is for Shane and I to be out of debt completely so that we can help our kids start a life early the way that we didn't. We didn't have help. We both came from pretty poor families. We were dirt poor and we were in like state. It was like, um, it wasn't like what they call like the projects, like the housing authority, but we were in a housing authority branch of the government. Our Colton was literally brought home to an apartment that we paid very, very little for. It was like back then, it was like $300, and that's, that's cheap for an apartment around here in Tennessee, especially even back then. That's where Colton was brought home to, and all odds were against us. We we couldn't really borrow money. I, I tell you guys often, my nanny literally carried me through those years. I worked, Shane worked his hind off in for a while. He wasn't making enough money doing what he was doing, so I went. I went to school and I started working in healthcare, and we did make more money then, but we were still struggling so bad. Those are the days that I tell you that we use dish soap as laundry detergent. So I've been there, done that. I don't want debt. <laughs> Would a big house be awesome? Absolutely, there's a lot of us. Um, we are packed like sardines in here. 
but is that my goal no ma'am no ham no turkey <laughs> i want to be debt free so that i can be there for my kids for my grandkids they will be set their college funds are already started and are going to be set their first car they won't have to struggle for responsibility is a lot different than struggling i think that it, my opinion is a child can learn responsibility with the aid of their parent. They don't have to struggle and go hungry to learn responsibility. Shannon and I didn't learn responsibility that way. <laughs> I will tell you that much. We made devastating financial decisions after the fact. Um, and, and it actually backfired because the minute we got a little bit of money in our pockets, it would be blown and we would be in a worse situation than we were before we got the little bit of money in our pockets. So I'm a firm believer the way that I am raising my kids, you work for what you have, but if there ever comes a time where you fall short or you need a little bit of help, that's what mama's here for. That's what daddy's here for. That bread has me sweating y'all. <laughs> they're not going to be walking two miles to Bojangles to work when they're 17. They're not going to be having to work themselves to the bone while they're in in college or trades trade school whatever they want to go to and they're definitely not going to be eating ramen noodles while trying to afford something like college or rent bigger isn't always better to me and I am happy here my kids are happy here I love my home I've put blood sweat and tears into this home Shane has put blood sweat and tears into this home we have made it our mobile mansion and are continuing to make it our mobile mansion so I have no desire to get better because in my eyes this is the best it can get this is the best I've ever had it. Best I've ever had it. I, I've had bigger houses and not had it as good as I have it here because I love this home. This home is where I've raised my kids. This home is where I started YouTube. This home is where I found Jesus. This home is it for me. It, it has everything I could ever want and it's very, very sentimental and very special to me. And y'all know I hold on to talkies from the neighborhood kids and put them in my freezer. Y'all know I'm about to hold on to this trailer. Let me get some lights going on in here because the sun is going down. You can't see my garland in my lights a little bit uh, really good. I like it whenever I stand right here because you can see all the lights together. Look how pretty that looks. And then the garland up here. But I'm going to turn on some of my overhead lights so that y'all can really see what I'm talking about and not be over here in the dark. It might actually help if I open this door. Oh, it does. Okay. All right. So, did I just make y'all sick? I'm so sorry. So, let me sit y'all down so I can explain. Last year, I went... <laughs> It's just the neighbors. Also, if we moved out to land, who would Binks and Taylor bark at? What's their favorite pastime? So the first year here on YouTube that I ever decorated for Christmas, you can go back and look at that video. I'll actually, I'll actually link down below. I'll link the recipe to the bread, and I'll also link my first Christmas decorate with me here on YouTube. It is a drastic difference. <laughs> this is my third year here on YouTube decorating for Christmas. The first year was very bare minimum. We had a little to nothing. I was lucky to have milk in the fridge. So decor was not a priority. I did learn though, after starting YouTube, I thought to myself, I really like to save and, and do my envelope budget. Cause I, I'd been doing the envelope budget for a, while, a little bit before then, not for long, but for a little bit. So I was like, I'd really like to try out this envelope budget that I'm, I'm doing right now on Christmas decor. So I started saving for the next year's Christmas decor. And I got a pretty big amount in the envelope. Let me take this off too while I'm waiting. What are you growling at? Acting like you're a pit bull. But I, I realized that saving in an envelope for your seasonal decor is the way to go. Now, could I have bought something more important, more valuable with that money? Yes, but you could say the same thing for anything you purchase, any any fun thing, anything for a hobby, anything for a fun trip, anything for a fun out, outing with your family. Um, any amount of decor, you could say something better you could have bought with that money. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to have some Christmas decor. I wanted my kids to remember mama made this trailer out to be a Christmas wonderland. So I got enough money to save up for what I got last year, which was our first ever actual really big cool tree right there. I got that by saving that first year. We started out by doing a more neutral themed uh, Christmas and I, that I learned quickly I didn't want that so I added some pops of reds. That's when I started thinking about doing a colorful fun Christmas. I knew I would want, I would, I'd be wanting to add to my theme. My theme that I had last year is actually in my bedroom and in the boys room. But I knew I'd be wanting to change my theme so I started saving. All year long I saved. I saved, I saved, I saved, I saved. And that's how I was able to 
do some of this stuff as well as DIY some of this Candyland stuff. So is it worth it to somebody else? Probably not. Probably think I'm dumber than snot for saving for Christmas decor. But it brought me serotonin and my kids have absolutely been over the moon about it. And Shane has walked in here every day in the door and been like, wow, it looks so pretty. Every day of this season, he has walked in every day and said, wow, it's so pretty in here. Was it worth it? Absolutely. It was absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth the skipped whopper. Absolutely worth the not going to Waggles at 12 at midnight to get a fountain drink. Absolutely worth not giving in to the impulse buy at TJ Maxx. It was worth it. Starting off right here. This garland is actually a mix of two garlands. Both of them are from Hobby Lobby, but they're two garlands and you wouldn't be able to tell. But I had to use what I had because I was running low in the Christmas budget and there are a lot of other things I wanted to do. So this is the, the garland that was actually over my window last year. And you can tell up close, it's actually very different to this frosted garland up here. So this is frosted garland from Hobby Lobby from this year. And this is garland from Hobby Lobby from last year. This tree is from Hobby Lobby from last year. I noticed that they had it in Hobby Lobby this year too. That is my little gingerbread that my husband painted me. I love him so much. I think I named him Cash. Cash Money. I can't remember. <laughs> but on this tree, I have the Candyland themed uh, picks. Is that what they're called? Christmas tree picks? I have the candy theme picks. I have big red and white and and pink pieces in here little candy pieces like this but my most favorite things on here let me show y'all some of my most favorite things on here pieces from you guys from this year and last year you guys are all over this tree oops and i've said it once and i'll say it again it does not matter what theme i have for years to come these along with my kids homemade ornaments that you see right here will stay on here for forever trends can eat a fart they're staying on here for forever but all of these that you guys are seeing right now those are from you guys over here i got these trees this one from hobby lobby this one from tj maxx and this one from ross i believe i wanted to add just a little bit to the bottom of the trees because i made little candies down here to go under here because i never have put anything under the trees except for presents so i made little candies right there to go there and then i and then i started thinking about what i could do beside the tree that one's a little bit crooked ain't it beside the tree to like you know just make it look to make it look even more festive and so i found those three trees that is a box from last year that's a stack of books from last year those are both pillows from last year and this is from a subscriber like i like to call them better yet a best friend i was at a local harvest festival heard somebody hollering my name looked over and it was somebody sitting there who made wreaths she had this for sale i had to support a friend so i bought that and that is some of the best money I spent at that Harvest Festival. This garland came from Hobby Lobby. That came from Ross last year. I get asked a ton about this wreath and I did not think it would be a hit with y'all. But I get asked a ton about it and I got that at the Ross. I made these two right here. I have a video on that. And I found this at Ross. It lights up. And I found that at Ross. It lights up. I really went overboard with light up stuff. Especially the battery powered ones. But I love it when it's all lit up. That little tree back there is from the Dollar Tree. I think it was $3. It was like the Dollar Plus tree. This is from last year. This garland is from Ross. And it actually matches this garland from Hobby Lobby right here. But this one lights up. It lights up and I got it for cheaper at Ross. I got this garland at Hobby Lobby last year. This tree, this little pencil tree is also from Hobby Lobby. All the ornaments on it are candy themed too. And a lot of them are personal ornaments. Like Colton's ornament back there. And uh, ornaments like these from you guys. But it also has a bunch of candy stuff on it. I love this tree. I love the bottom of it here. Everybody asks me where this is from. That's from TJ Maxx. I love that I have little trees over here to kind of play off the trees across the room. And I have that big candy tree. That's my favorite tree I own. And then I had that from last year. Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby. I love those, but they do take batteries. Um, I took this out and I left it here because I wanted to show you guys. I had told you guys that I absolutely love this thing and I got it from Walmart. It's a ornament wax warmer. And I said, oh, I love it so much. And y'all have seen me use it. Uh, I noticed that there was a funny smell coming out of it. And I wanted to show you guys since I had talked about it. But the color on it, the red color you can see there, is actually melting. And it leaves a residue all over this and all over your hands. And it smells very chemically and almost irony. 
So I unplugged it as much as it hurt me to and haven't used it since and we'll probably just throw it away because I don't think that's very safe. It can't be very safe. I can't remember where I got this. I think I got this at the TJ Maxx. But I love it because it has a little gingerbread on it. This house lights up and it goes along with the big tree there that I love, 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 love. The, I got this one from Hobby Lobby. It goes with my little gingerbread. Man, I can't remember where I got this tree but I want to say it was either Hobby Lobby or Ross. See, this is the downside to doing this so late in the game i can't remember where half of this is from i do remember these are from one of you guys though you guys found these at what family dollar i think that's family dollar sticker and they were just what i was looking for to go up there got that gingerbread from the hobby lobby that from ross and that merry christmas sign from tj maxx i think right here i got this little lit up snowflake and i like it when we're coming up the hill in the trailer park it's all lit up in the window I got my card tree over here. I'm going to rotate out my cards so that I can show off even more of y'all's cards. That is from Ross. And their Christmas toys are from Ross and Walmart. Are you on this? What are you doing? That is from Ross as well. I love my little candy pillow. It goes along with my little candy light up thing down there from Walmart. It's actually outdoor, but I like it in here. And then Shane's Little Christmas Village. Hold on, I'm going to light it up. I'm going to light it up like 4th of July, baby. Y'all can just stare at the cowbell while I walk over here. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Those are all the plug-in ones. I don't know which one goes off battery. Shane would have to show y'all that one. But we got our little baby Jesus, which is the star of the show. So we got trees. What is this? Hunchback of Notre Dame something other? Oh, our little snowman is drunk. Lord of mercy. He's been drinking too much apple cider. Oh, there we go. Lean on the hunchback of Notre Dame. And we got Santa over here reading the nice and naughty list on the toilet. <laughs> That's a new addition this year. We've got a Black Bear Lodge. We've got these little things over here. Look at Colton and Carolyn. Y'all see Colton and Carolyn? Y'all remember that video? Shane made us into little villagers in his village. And Colton takes his Carolyn so seriously. <laughs> we got the fountain. The fountain lights up, I know for sure, but I don't know how to light it up. We got kids over there making snowball i like it and i like how he put it up here he was going to put it at the entryway but i told him it would look good here and it does especially when it's all lit up it looks so pretty paired with the garland and one of you guys sent me this and i love it it goes perfect with my theme my color scheme it's beautiful i've gotten so many compliments on that thing this is my favorite view in the house right here whenever i can see it all the way to the hallway the tree back there and all the lights go together uh, it's so pretty got lights up here because we wanted something kind of bright and lighty in here because that wall is so dark we don't have a whole lot of christmas decorations in the dining room and kitchen area that's my apron that i've been wearing so it just kind of looks good flowing into the living area i think so anyway all we really have in the dining room is this little tree with the garland to make it look like little snowballs and little gingerbread ornaments from one of you guys and some fairy lights that the batteries went dead on. We have this wreath up here which is from Hobby Lobby. And then we just have this little area right here that's kind of a little messed up right now. Kind of got stuff just laying everywhere. Um, oh, there went an animal cracker. <laughs> there went an animal cracker bag. We've got my coasters up here, a little jar of candy canes, and this is an actual dish that I found at Ross. It's candy themed. It's supposed to sit up but I haven't got a plate stand in here. And then this garland is from TJ Maxx, I believe. These are from a yard sale. This is one of the things that inspired me to decorate with gingerbread men. And then I got this little oh snap block and a Dollar Tree Christmas tree over here. And then over here we have this, which is from one of you guys. I love this so much. It just adds everything I wanted to here in this little area. There wasn't a whole lot of space to decorate in this area. I didn't want to crowd it because it is very narrow i mean not too narrow but you know having that wall blocked off whenever we did the l-shaped island project whenever we did that project it closed it in in here which i like because i love the l-shaped island it's one of my favorite parts of the house but it did make this area feel kind of claustrophobic 
So there wasn't a whole lot I could do in here. So adding that to the floor just really brought everything together. This is for dinner, so don't mind it. I got it laying out here. But over here, I just had a tree that I had from, gosh, three, four years ago, probably. Put some lights on it. Found this stuff at a yard sale, a church yard sale. So I added it there with my method dish soap and my little sink scrubber. This is kind of Christmassy too because you see the back of the village. <laughs> but then over here I have this little area. And some of this stuff is stuff that y'all sent me too. I, I just opened that one this last trip to the P.O. Box. It's so creative. Like look how that's one of the most unique pieces I have in my home now. It's meant for like an edge. It's one of the most unique pieces. And this right here goes perfectly with all of that. And I got these little salt and pepper shakers at Ross. And I got that from, oh, a lady from church. I think that was in the last batch of stuff. Oh, didn't stuff. She gave me that. I showed you guys. But that's all I really put over here because I didn't want to crowd it. Because over here, I usually have my crock pot. But now I have this air fryer. And this is what Nanny got me for Christmas. And I screamed. I hollered. Because I've... I've I, yeah, I don't have cool gadgets like this, so I was like, heck yes, I gotta learn how to do it, and I've been reading the manual, believe it or not, fearfully created, Miranda's been reading the manual, <laughs> I've been reading the manual to try to figure out, so we're gonna actually use that tonight for dinner. God bless America, let's hope I don't break it or, or mess the food up, or break my brain in the process. Walking in here to the hallway, I don't know what I'm gonna find, because like I said, I haven't, I haven't cleaned. We have this little tree back here, I wanted a tree back here to brighten it up. Because this hallway feels like a dungeon sometimes. So we have some blues, red, pinks, uh, candy cane sharp ribbon, red ornaments. These little pigs right here. I got this tree this year from Hobby Lobby. And it's probably one of the things that made me most happy this season. Because while three Christmas trees does sound like a lot, I have an actual big one, like a standard one. And then I had a little pencil one. And then I had this little mini one. And so I think that's a I think that's a good balance. Plus I have the mini ones on the countertops. Coming in here, we actually decorate for Christmas. Hold on, somebody left the toilet seat up. Coming in here, we decorated the kids' bathroom. Like I said, I haven't swept the floors or nothing, but they have little gnome rugs, and then they have this little nice list, and you can flip it over, and it says naughty list. But I like to promote. Um, niceness, so I'll leave it on that. Nobody touches it. <laughs> I got that. I think I got that from TJ Maxx. It was either TJ Maxx or Ross. And then this little gnome feller soap dispenser was from Ross. And this little gingerbread a thing. I don't really know what it was even for, but I stuck a bunch of toothbrushes and some toothpaste in there. I got that from Yard Sale. Got these little gnome hand towels from Ross. And I like how the red really plays off the blue teal color of their vanity. That's one of my most favorite projects too. This bathroom. Hey. I'm going to my hair in a ponytail today. For Shane because he specifically asked that. But I want it to look like this. Like I want my hair in a bun so bad I can't stand it. Got that wreath from Hobby Lobby. And got the shower curtain from Ross. This actually came with the two rugs. And then I got Christmas towels over here on the blanket or towel ladder. And then a piece bucket down there. Which should not be that close to the toilet, but that's where we keep... I guess the kids just wad up dish rags and wash rags and keep it down there for some reason. I don't know. Hey, can I come in? <laughs> so in here, you want to turn on your Christmas lights? Make it cozy looking for them? So Colton has... His little lamp, he likes the warm lights in his lamp. So he has his little lamp over there with the warm lights in it. You haven't wow. been having it on? Uh oh. Huh. Ah! <laughs> ah! Well, Come on. are you crazy? <laughs> oh, I can't I find you. He used a lot of the decor from uh, last year, didn't you, Co? In the first year. Look how cute it looks. How come you didn't have it on already? You just wasn't okay. feeling it? Or you just didn't feel like doing all that trouble to turn it on? You see that picture over there? That melts my heart every time I look at it because Colton actually set that up of me and him. He went and found a picture of me and him and he put it in here and it melts me every time. I pray to God, Colton, that you never take this out of your room because I... I'm oh, sorry, it's being replaced. It has, <laughs> <laughs> it has made my whole life. We got... Like your personal ornament, right? Yeah. So, like, stuff like this over here, um, that's from a few Christmases ago. 
Uh, this is actually broken and it's from Daddy's Villa Drop, but you stole it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then um, these are his little people he made out of our little village people. And then look at what he drew. Look at that. How pretty. Oh. Cammy really likes the Christmas tree on in here. He really likes the Christmas tree on in here. Oh, right? He has this little buffalo plaid snowflake thing which we had from years ago and then this little deer from years ago they have like their gamers cammy's gamers and colton's gamers and their Santa's, uh, and their star cammy really Yoda. likes cammy really likes the ornaments off the tree versus on the tree <laughs> and then what's this down here jack skeleton i actually have like halloween decorations of them in here Colton. Don't in my messy closet. <laughs> it's actually not that big of a mess. <laughs> Colin, it's not Damn. supposed to look like that. I'm sorry. That I have these for Halloween and fall. Why do you lock those? Uh, I, I, I'm not judging. I'm just, why do you lock those? Watch the Sesame Street. You want to sing it? Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom! Boom! Did Colton just MTV cribs you? He did. And here, this is Shane's uh, game room. <laughs> and here we've got my squishmallows on top of my bookcase. Are y'all proud of me? I've been keeping it clean in here because it looks too good to mess up. I've been making my bed every day. Shane, if I'm lying, I'm crying and I ain't shed tears. Hey, yeah! <laughs> and then I have squishmallows up here. And then I have my holiday books on show so i have this book which i haven't read yet i don't even know what it's about and i'm currently reading this book right here and it's kind of ya but it's interesting it's like about a train crash and these people get stranded in this very big blizzard and it's like following teenagers kind of i got decor from last year and the years before just ones i got my babies just ones that i, I couldn't use anywhere else here's my other babies kind of like a woodsy vibe i guess and then we have the garland over here and Shane's messed up this. These stockings are here and this Merry Christmas sign from Hobby Lobby. This candle Shane got me at the dollar store. Focus. It smells really good and I'm not usually a fan of like berry smells. But it smells really good. It smells up this room too when I light it. This garland I got at Hobby Lobby on sale for like 60% off and I just put some lights from Ross on it. Shane's got a little tree over here. Same thing from Hobby Lobby with lights on it. This is just extra snowflake. I have my cross which is here all year long but I like to, well in the house all year long. It's an ornament but I like to just set it up for all year. And then I have my Christmassy Bath and Body Works hand sanitizers here. Got my Christmas blanket that I love. My fall -a -la pillow that I absolutely love. My favorite part of my bedroom. And that's all of the areas that I have decorated. I didn't decorate my bathroom this year. I wanted to, but time just got away from me. We were super busy. No, we didn't decorate the girl. Shane's crawling under me. <laughs> we didn't decorate the girls' room because it's Hi not guys. done yet. I'm, I've been getting a ton of questions about the girls' room, and I I want it done too. I want it done as bad as y'all want it. I want it done worse. <laughs> but the girls really want it done worse. Um, but I don't want to rush it just for the sake of a video. I don't do any of my makeovers like that. I, I don't prioritize my makeovers as videos. It's it's not content. I mean, it is, but it's not just content. The main thing about it is it, it's making over my home. I don't want to rush it. I don't want to settle for anything. And I definitely don't want my kids to settle for anything. And what happened was is they were wanting a specific item. We ordered that item. It's one of the last items <laughs> that we have to get before it's done. And they wanted something specific. And we don't have it. It's delayed. I'm not going to make them settle. I asked them if they want to wait or move on. They said wait. So that's what we're doing. Hopefully it will be soon whether they reship it or whether it gets here or whatever. It'll be soon. But with as much problem as it's given me, we're probably going to wait till after the holidays. Is that what we talked about? Yeah, I think so. Um, to do it because I don't want to be in the middle of a makeover or a home or mobile home update or something like that in the middle of Christmas. So probably after the holidays, we actually have a few days off after the holidays. So we'll be able to like really focus on getting that wrapped up and stuff.
You done? We did all that within an hour because we've got two minutes left until this dough is... And then for dinner, we're doing a pantry challenge over here. I'm trying to, like I said, trying to do more frugal stuff. Trying to use what we have and not let anything go bad. So I'm kind of just throwing together stuff that I already had. I did have to go get some chicken breasts because we were out of chicken breasts. Other than that, everything is stuff we already had or stuff that we're making. It's going to be a pantry challenge, homemade stuff, and I'm, I'm feeling good about that. I'm feeling better about not feeding my kids full of preservatives. I mean, obviously, they still eat preservatives. They they, they snacked today. They they literally had crackers in there. You guys might have even seen the crackers. I'm not just hitting them like a freight train and being like, everything is gluten-free. Everything is no preservatives. But I am slowly trying to transition them in a good way so that they don't dread it or so they don't see it as a bad thing. Let's see how much this has risen. I'm nervous. I'm so nervous. What if I didn't do it right? All right, if I didn't do it right, it's okay. We'll just do it again and we'll try to do it right. We'll do it however many times it takes to get it right. <laughs> I think we got it right. It's like double in size and that's what she said to be looking for. I made Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> oh um, my gosh. It rose. No, it's like it's like dough. It's bread dough. You can turn this into pizza dough, cinnamon so what roll. Do you do now? So now I bake it. And it only takes what kind of bread bake. is it? It's just bread. It's, just bread. it's my kind of bread, baby. Yes. Heck yeah. Are you excited? I'm done. You didn't know that's what I was doing? Oh. I never feel Shane in. <laughs> Sometimes it's just, here, eat this. What is it? Everything's always Don't a surprise. Me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it rose. No, it ain't baked yet. I'm just happy if it's risen. I mean, <laughs> I'm excited. So. <laughs> so we're just going to lightly turn this into an oval. Shape it into an oval. Alright, now I'm going to cover this and let it rise in the pan for about 20 to 30 minutes. That's what I'm told to do. Just in a corner in the kitchen. What are you making? Italian chicken sandwiches and potato wedges. Ooh. What kind of potato wedges? Is it the ones that you played? Oh, people, do you want your West Palm song? No, no. <laughs> Those were gross. <laughs> Catchy music makes me bon 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 in that one. Okay. Mama's making bread. And if I get this right, I'm going to teach you guys how to make bread. Yeah. What kind of bread are you making? It's like normal bread that you buy at the store. It just don't have like all the gross stuff in it. And it's not packaged up and it's homemade so it's special. You guys have to tell me how it tastes, okay? You have to be honest. While I'm waiting on my bread to rise, I'm going to get started on the chicken. So usually I do this to chat. I was not just digging in my butt, I promise. I was trying to, I'm afraid that my shirt's a little short, so I was afraid it was tucked into my underwear. I usually do this Italian chicken recipe in the crock pot, so I don't know how it'll differ being on the stove. We're just not, the only difference is we're not pairing it with pasta, we're pairing, we're putting it on a sandwich. So I just thought this would taste good. I haven't seen anybody else do it. I just thought it would taste good. I'm not using all these chicken breasts, but I'm going to use a few of them, and then I'm going to bag up the other ones and freeze them. So I can use them later this week. Three of them, because when it shreds along with the cream cheese and the dressing, it'll like, what did I say the other day? Bulk it up, bulk it up. Olive Garden Italian dressing. Basically everybody knows how to make it, but just in I case, don't. well Shane said he don't. So just in case somebody comes across this, they don't know how to make Italian cream, cream Italian, I don't know what this is called. <laughs> but if don't know how to make this, well I'm here to teach it. I'm gonna do a whole, little not a big a whole little one of these olive garden italian dressing bottles whole block of cream cheese we're gonna put some grated parmesan in there i like a lot but it usually ends up being about a cup i've been trying to measure more often in my cooking just to make sure that nothing ends up tasting nasty and like goes to waste that was ignorant of me to do to play with fire like that back in the day <laughs> with stuff like that i eyeball because we love cheese in here and it doesn't matter how much cheese, it's it's gonna be good. And that's salt and pepper it. And then we're going to cover it and cook it on medium a little while until it's done. I got my thermometer, so we'll see how long it takes. We've still got about 
10 minutes until the bread dough is done rising in the pan. So I'm gonna get to work on the potato wedges, or as this thing likes to call wedged potatoes. I hated on the cutting boards when I first got them from Big Lots, but I would have to say I've used them for so many things now. And while they are flimsy, and that was a flaw in the beginning, it ended up being a pro because that's why I love them so much. They're literally flimsy. I can just easily plop some stuff that I've chopped into a pan, or I can move it around, or flop it around, or whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't even move around. I'm gonna hold this recipe card up here in case you have an air fryer and you want to try this and maybe screenshot it or something. If you want to screenshot it, I'll put it right here. It looks pretty simple, so hopefully I can do it. I'm gonna double it because there's six of us, so we're gonna do eight russet potatoes. Eight washed russet potatoes because we don't want worms. Some of these are small, so we might actually end up doing ten. I don't know if everybody will like the chicken sandwiches, but I know that they'll like the potato wedges, so that's I'm gonna make sure I have enough for everybody to get seconds if they want them. Nobody has asked me <laughs> how I like these knives that I got, the cuisine art ones, the colored ones, um, but I'm liking them a whole lot. But they seem to cut really good and they haven't peeled or anything, which is a lot of what people were complaining about. They were saying there's peeled. Granted, I haven't had mine for a really long time, so I, I don't know how they'll do long term. But as of right now, like, they're doing really good. I like them. I got the olive oil in there, and I'm going to put some of this cowboy seasoning. It's actually meat seasoning, but we're going to do that. And some salt on there. And I think we'll do less is more when it comes to seasoning. do it in quarters since they said to do four russet potatoes and I did 10. I'm gonna, I don't know if I have to do them all evenly like this, but I'm gonna just put them evenly on the little fishnet plate. <laughs> Is that what it's called? I don't know. Evenly on the little fishnet plate and cook them that way and then just do however many batches I need to do to get them all done. All right. So we close that sucker up. We hit air fry for 18 minutes. It already has that on there. Um, temp. Yep. We need it at 400. We need it for 18 minutes. <laughs> I'm learning stuff. And it's the prime of my life right now. Jolie came running in here and said, What's that smell? It smells so good. It's so good. That's the cool thing.
it's edible. I, I'm gonna let it rest because I forgot that I couldn't cut it till it rests. I'm gonna let it rest and then we're gonna try and eat it. Did I make those? Oh my gosh. Okay, that's it. Food Network here. Oh, I'm gonna have Shane try one of these. Okay, you ready? Those cook. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Okay, get over here. Okay. Yeah, give me honest, honest, honest opinion. Here. Okay. Can I try? Hey, what? That tastes like something you get. Ow! You're welcome. They good? A hundred out of ten. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to slice some ketchup on those. This bread, now I'm biased because this is the first ever loaf of bread I've ever baked from scratch, but it was so good, like so, so, so good. It did have an excessive amount of flour on the outside of it, but I think that's something that I can fix later on in the many future batches I make. It it wasn't bad, it just reminded you a little bit of the outside of artisan bread, you know how it's like really floury. I sliced it really thick to so that we could make deli sandwiches out of it. The kids and Shane had a Bit over it like it was actually good y'all So Shane is may is watching. What are you watching, Shane? It's a wonderful life. It's a wonderful life. The kids have said they want to help me with dishes, so you know I'm gonna jump on that. I'm gonna give them all individual jobs so they they can all uh, help me with the dishes because otherwise it would be an argument. <laughs> and believe it or not, all those potato wedges I made weren't enough. So I've got another load here in the air fryer for the kids because they're really wanting some more. I'm gonna make something sweet for Shane, but I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of pull it out of my high end and see what I can come up with. I'm gonna make these, I found these on Pinterest. I said I was gonna pull something out of my high end. I pulled something out of Pinterest. <laughs> so it's the best Texas sheet cake cookies. And it takes, Oh, I'm waiting for it to, there we go. It takes chocolate cake mix and I have everything else that it needs. This Pinterest person knows what they're doing. These are the best cookies I've ever tasted in my life. It's more so like a brownie bite, and I wouldn't try them without the sauce. It's literally three ingredients for the cookie. It's cake mix, oil, and an egg, and it makes like a dough, and you just scoop it out like you would cook, uh, cookies. And then for the icing or the frosting, it takes cocoa, some milk, but I didn't have milk, so I used half and half butter and you mix it up real good and then once it's all mixed together and it's come to like a slow boil you add in your powdered sugar you dip them while they're still while it's still hot because it's kind of like a um i don't really know the word but it hardens after a time it's so good
not much of a chocolate fan, but I can see myself picking out on these. My baby girls have cleaned up after dinner. They're on their last dish. Those cookies are bomb. I'm not used to sweet stuff anymore because I don't eat a whole lot of sweet, so I'm gonna have to go chunk some water. They are very, 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 very sweet. But that homemade chocolate sauce is perfect. I ain't ashamed. Even Shane liked it, and he's not a fan of chocolate. I think he's gonna You're getting another one? Yeah. The, the chocolate sauce hardens on them. Yeah, like. I like it. You like it really? Yeah, I really did. Shane is not a chocolate fan. He would not come and get another one if he did not like it. So today has been a good day. I'm gonna sit down, watch. What is it, Mama? Mommy, I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus. I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus with the kids and Shane and Juan down. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Thank y'all for hanging out with me. I hope you guys have a blessed morning. Good night. Where is? Where is? Know that I love you, but these are love you more. I'll see y'all later. I'll see y'all later. <laughs>